but in uh, today's world of uh, dealing with moves of, of COVID and, and changing and having to pivot from in-person to uh, working remotely to students being remote, I, I guess it's just one more thing that we have to deal with. So you get to hear my voice and, and maybe people can picture who I am and then if I unfreeze, or maybe my picture's there and you can picture who I am. Uh, but I'm Doug Turtz. I am the Senior Vice President of Sales here at Lightpath. Uh, my camera was working well, and, and then it, it froze as we kicked on air here. So I apologize for that. Hopefully our other speakers will, will not be frozen. Um, but I did want to take a moment and, and thank you all for taking time out of your day uh, to spend some time with Lightpath and to... Um, uh, let us tell our story a little bit about what we're doing in the education space. Uh, we have a great audience assembled from various districts in the New York metro area, and uh, we'll go into some detail as we go into the day here. Uh, that said, uh, again, I appreciate the time you're taking as we talk about our network plans, our network infrastructure, and how we are making an impact uh, in the education world on a daily basis. Lightpath uh, has been around for, for 30 years, and we have made a, a big um, inroad in the education space. We have dealt with a, a number of folks that have uh, many, many schools to those that have a few schools, and we've always uh, been a partner. And, and what we do from the perspective of Lightpath is look at our network as the foundation of how we go and do our work. Uh, we look at that as the first building block to take our fiber optic network and bring it to as many places as possible and then design it so that it is resilient and can be flexible. And that means, as I talked about uh, earlier with COVID and the ability to pivot, the ability to have uh, internet come on board or Wi-Fi or security, and you're going to hear a little bit about those products today as we go through what we do and how specifically we do it. You'll hear from experts like Massimo Cardarelli, our Vice President of Engineering, and Ken Florenz, our Director of Product, and Bill Cheslock, our Product Manager, on what we're doing and how this can make an impact for your day-to-day. -day. We want to be the enabler. We know that you are the innovator. You know more about your school system and what your needs are than anyone. And we want to be the fabric that helps you deliver so we always bring the consultative approach. We have current customers and prospects that call us up and ask us questions on a daily basis, on a regular basis about what do we think, what are we seeing. When we deal with, as we do thousands of customers, we sometimes get to see solutions or problems, and then we can get out ahead of that uh, prior to them becoming problems for our other customers. So lean on us. We encourage that. And that is where we bring our expertise and approach. You know, it, it, we want to get out there and really get involved with our customers in a consultative manner. We have different vehicles in terms of the state OGS. We have a great relationship with USAC. We have a deep understanding of how these things work, working with different education consultants, the different data centers that are out there, the different internet backbones that are relevant to to uh, the school systems, how Wi-Fi can play a role, all these different elements that come together is where we sort of act as an inflection point for our customers, and that's what we hope uh, to bring across today. And really, it is our customers and our prospects. That, that is our focus. You know, we are uh, every day now running more and more as, as Lightpath has evolved with a, a joint new ownership and new backers in the combination of Altice, who many of you know, as well as Morgan Stanley Infrastructure Partners as our PE arm, the two owners of us have, have put together a real plan that says we are really focused on this mission-critical data at the core and using our infrastructure to enable, again, all this innovation. But the reality is we want to do this with our customer-first focus, so uh, making sure that when there's critical things coming up in a school calendar, we want to know about that. We want our knock to be prepared. We want that experience to shine and resonate to go above and beyond just the normal course of circuitry or security. We really want to be partners with you and your business. So just uh, my, my last slide here as the introduction. I get the, the, the nice job of being able to do the introductory speech and then hand it over to the experts to talk to you in more detail. 
you know, I wanted to just pull out the, the idea of cloud. You know, we're connected to cloud providers. We are connected to the different data centers. I mentioned the fiber as the first layer. And we want to use these things to talk to you about all the different ways you could optimize and deliver a network. We know that there are teams, especially in the education world, where you have a number of IT and experts within your uh, districts, that may be the case, or you may have a district where it's a number of teachers who have been asked to suddenly become the IT experts. We, we've seen all spectrums and we can play whatever element within your district the need may be. So uh, we're excited about what we're bringing to market. We're very focused in the New York metro area. We have thousands of route miles of fiber. And again, we use that to create kind of custom flexible solutions. We have just uh, kind of put our flag in the ground with a brand new backbone to enhance what we already had and new capabilities that bring this level of flexibility uh, to a new level for our customers and, and for our education customers. So I'm gonna pass the baton now over to Massimo Cardarelli, who's our Vice President of Sales Engineering, to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing with our backbone, and then you'll hear from some of our product experts. There is a Q&A section. If people have questions throughout the day, please put that uh, right into the question and answer, and at the end, we'll, we'll come on board and answer any questions that have been uh, positioned to us. And if we can't tell you the answer today, we will get back to you right away. So again, thank you for joining and taking time out of your day. We'll keep this to the concise hour, hour and 15 minutes as planned and look forward to meeting you all in person. Hopefully I'm unfrozen, but if not, uh, uh, you'll see me more animated at the end. Moss, I'll pass it to you. Thank you, Doug. Um, am I frozen? Could you hear me? You are not frozen and we can hear you. Awesome, thank you. So, so good morning, everybody. Um, as, as Doug mentioned, I'm Massimo Cotterelli, I'm Vice President of Sales Engineer here at LightPath. Uh, recently joined the company about nine months. And, you know, it's exciting times for us. We have a dense fiber network throughout the tri-state area, throughout Long Island, and it has reached as far down as the Ashburn, Virginia, and out to other markets. And one of the significant investments we are making is in our optical transport. There's been a significant investment on the Ethernet side from, you know, sub-rate services all the way up to 10 gig on an Ethernet platform. But from an optical transport platform, we're making a, an investment in the backbone here. And what we've done is we've, we're leading with Sienna. We, we signed a, a deal with Sienna right now, and we're in the middle of overbuilding our entire core infrastructure. And what's unique, off to the right here, you'll see a bunch of lines and dots throughout our footprint. And what we're doing is we're essentially taking our fiber and taking advantage of our head ends throughout the footprint, which is unique in that... We're not relying on the third-party facilities, so we're, we're diverse from other providers and other carriers, and we're building what's called a RLS technology network with Sienna's core platform, and it's, it's essentially reconfigurable line services. It'll enable us to do anywhere from one gig up to 400 gig client handoffs across our entire backbone. Uh, we could do unprotected point-to-point -point services, protected services, and really lean on the technology and take advantage of the infrastructure. Um, in addition to that, you know, we, we could offer services over it, a layer one optical encryption. We could do private networks. We, you take advantage of this infrastructure here in our core, we could do what's considered OTS services, leveraging it. But when we talk private services, it's truly taking advantage of the fiber footprint that we have, right? So we have customers today that, want connectivity to cloud providers or looking for a DR strategy or just need connectivity between their private data centers. We take this technology here and we can lean on it to bring you to those cloud providers, to bring you to your DR sites, to bring you to your data center, or we could peel the onion back a bit and just lean on the fiber and build a true carrier class network for the individual systems. So an example would be here if there was a school system on Long Island that needed a DR connection out and they're on the eastern end and they're trying to get in into call the Brooklyn Queens area for connectivity to a facility. We could either dedicate fibers and hardware or we could lean on our infrastructure here to traverse the RLS technology with Sienna. Um, again, layer one encryption, 
big bandwidth, big pipes, latency sensitive type application, fixed routing, um, and known routing. One of the things we like to pride ourselves on is when we pull the solution together, leveraging this architecture, we could get down to the street level to show our customers the actual routing and how their circuit is traversing from location A to location Z, because we own the fiber, we know the routes, and we own the, op the equipment here that's going to be traversing. Just going to jump over to the next slide. So on the next slide here, I'm just a quick example of how we lean on this network. Currently today, the it's legacy architecture that's being upgraded. And in each one of those head ends that I shared on the previous slide, we're going to be putting a combination of chassis cards and Rotom equipment that allows us to traverse the core. This slide here just gives you an example. If a client site was sitting up in Connecticut and they needed connectivity to New Jersey, I just picked New Jersey because that's where a lot of the on ramps are for the cloud providers. We can leverage this architecture where from a client prem perspective, we actually dedicate, it could be a two slot, four slot, seven slot chassis at a customer prem. We take advantage of muxing and demuxing with channel filters, and it could be anywhere from eight, 16, 44 channels, depending on the capacity and the future growth requirements of the location. And that will be dedicated fiber tied into one of our head ends. Once it hits our head end, we will have this system in place with multiple Rotom degrees, multiple channels, up to 88 channels, all of them capable of doing up to 800 gig from a line perspective. We're able to route around the head ends, pick specific routing, have known latency, and traverse. In this example, we go from Norwalk. From Norwalk, we hit multiple head ends through call it Stanford, either Mamaroneck or Westchester, which is White Plains over the Tappan Zee Bridge. However, we need to get to that Z location that sits in New Jersey. And in this example here, we're going down to Piscataway. So we're riding a system all the way to Piscataway. And same in the New Jersey location, dedicated fiber from our head end, and it extends out to the customer prem. And it's 100% dedicated to the customer at that point, where the fiber, the chassis at the customer prem, the architecture is dedicated. And this enables us to do anywhere from, today it's 400 gig of capacity where we could do a client handoff. We could do multiple 100 gigs, multiple 10 gigs, as well as we could do um, fiber channel. It's pretty much protocol agnostic, right? If a customer is trying to do some type of a TDM service, if they're trying to do some, some storage applications, it all gets wrapped into this pretty much platform and we're able to transport it from A to Z. Uh, in addition, this is how we believe on our shared infrastructure. For, for clients, though, what we like to do is step outside the box and, and dedicate fiber and chassis as well. So as far as this, we could do private networks in this scenario here where from Connecticut location down to the New Jersey site, we do have the ability to essentially dedicate fiber, dedicate hardware, and build a true private network for those customers that need to scale beyond multiple hundred gigs, multiple, you know, fiber channel circuits, doing replication on their on their sands. Um, and you know that that's pretty much it. We're we're rolling this out. We're we're phase one of a phase two rollout right now. Uh, phase one pretty much covers Long Island, New York City, and up to Westchester County. Phase two is going to extend it further out. And, you know, that, that covers what we're doing with the optical platform. With that, I am going to hand it over, I believe, to Ken and Bill on the product team, where they're going to take you through a little more detailed on other products sets such as cloud Yeah. in the presentation. Hey, Moss. Hey, Moss. It's Doug and, and Roman. I don't know if you can pin me for a second. I just wanted to add one element for everyone to think about, you know, as Moss was describing with the fiber footprint and now this level of infrastructure, you have the ability to not only think about your district and your particular needs within your environment, but also in the world of connecting to uh, whether it's fire or police or voice, this, level of fiber and this fiber. level of core infrastructure allows us and affords us the ability to point to many of those other sites that are really, really important uh, for 
uh, districts and school systems these days in terms of connectivity to whether it's municipal buildings, whether it's, as I said, police, fire, and have those video feeds. However somebody wants to run something, um, this affords us that ability to open those channels or to keep it closed. So think about that flexibility. And now we'll, we'll turn it to Ken to talk about how the, the cloud world and, and product world plays into to this as well. So Ken, I'll turn it to you. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate it. Thanks for uh, giving us the opportunity to uh, present here today. Uh, I'm going to start off talking about Cloud Connect, and then I'm going to shift over to, to Bill uh, so that he can talk a little bit more about other security uh, aspects of our offerings. Our Cloud Connect product today is driven by the need by various different businesses as they started to take into account uh, security, uh, um, reliability, uh, and economics, as you can see from the slide. Uh, the product that we built out today is basically connectivity from our core directly out to these various different cloud providers, whether it's AWS, Azure, Google, Salesforce, WebEx, whatever it is that you need. Uh, next slide. So what drove us to this, right? Well, when you start looking at what the marketplace is doing out there, cloud services have grown tremendously, as you can see from 2019 to 2023. It almost doubled. It actually more than doubled, right? And what drove it really, as I mentioned before, is the security aspect. The ability of traversing data, having data traverse from your network through our core out to those core providers without having to go across the internet open to anyone and everyone. A second is the cost. As we all know, it's very costly to get uh, well-intentioned, educated IT folks out there to support you, and it's expensive, right? And then also, it's the course, it's the, um, the modernization of various different applications that are out there that require those type of cloud uh, connections. For example, as we know in the world we are today, nobody's dedicated to one area anymore. Right? We have to be able to get to our data from anywhere to anywhere. Then the last piece of it is the white glove service that you've got. Most of you have probably come to know that we support. Right, We have a lot of the contracts that are out there with many of you folks, and you know that the, the 24 by 7, the 365, the customized solutions that you need from us, as you heard from Moss, how we're building out our core and our, and, and our infrastructure, it will allow us to even go further to build out those customized needs that you may have for various different uh, situations. So what is it? So Cloud Connect is nothing more than us building a layer two Ethernet connection between our core, your location, and the cloud provider. It's direct. Now, we do have network-to-network uh, -network interfaces with our Equinix partner in places where we can't be direct that we can leverage, but it is still a dedicated connection from our network through to the cloud providers. That allows your data to be safe, to be secure, and unencumbered. So we'll be utilizing our existing EVC type of uh, platform and, and technology, whether it's OTS, we connect through the network and we'll head out to those various different cloud providers. So our products are still there and they're very simple to understand, to order and to implement. There are various different bandwidth options. You'll find out in the market today, folks don't wanna be bothered with smaller pieces of bandwidth or sm smaller designations of bandwidth. Uh, we go from 100 all the way up to 10 gig, depending upon whatever your needs are. And then where do we connect? We mainly connect at Secaucus and Ashburn, which is NY4 and DC5, but we're looking at new places where we can go and start putting more and more data centers in place where we can connect to based upon our customers' needs. What I did here was we put together a slide just to give you an idea of the flexibility that we have. There may be times when, as a customer, you need to have a single NID, one single connection coming in and going out to the various different cloud providers. You may want to have resiliency to the first level, which allows you to have dual NIDs, which are network interface devices with two circuits coming in and dedicated across to those two different uh, cloud providers, or even the same provider in the terms of Azure. 
And then there may be a single NID where you want to head out to two different uh, cloud providers. So we have a multitude of options here that we can leverage, design, or architect depending upon what you and your customers' needs are. So what I'm going to say here before I turn it over to Bill is knowing that the cloud environment and architecture is becoming a forefront technology that folks are taking part of as part of the educational facilities and systems that you use, we know that Chromebooks are tremendously popular and utilized all over the place. Think about having uh, these, these laptops all connecting up and through a dedicated connection to your Google Classroom uh, web presence without having to ride the internet and going direct. It, was, it, it provides resiliency, security, and also takes a lot of the latency out of the picture when you're routing across the internet. So uh, with that, uh, thank you, and I'll turn it over to Bill. Hey, Ken, thank you, um, and welcome everybody. Um, following up from Ken's discussion on Cloud Connect, um, what you see is that uh, Lightpath is not only providing connectivity, but throughout uh, every layer of the conversation, uh, Mass mentioned the encryption that we're working on at layer one. Ken mentioned the uh, security of having Cloud Connect in your own circuit, um, getting to the cloud. Um, and besides some of the other products that we um, provide, um, we protect with our DDoS protection, we have protection at our edge, um, finally, uh, we, we have a new product, a relatively new product called Endpoint Security. And because of the evolution of how hackers and malware um, has evolved, uh, we're introducing this product and we think it's going to be very valuable to all of our customers. In terms of what Endpoint Security is, um, it's, it's a protection at the endpoint level. Endpoints are workstations, servers, um, laptops. These are the uh, computer components, the network components that hackers are starting to target because they're finding that the traditional uh, protections that are put in place, otherwise known as protect, uh, traditional uh, uh, antivirus software, um, has holes and there are techniques to get around that. So what's happened is we've, with the enterprise endpoint security protection, we're able to minimize the risk to your endpoints, which is therefore minimizing risk to your networks. Um, it's local cyber protection because as that laptop travels, as it goes from a classroom to a home, the protection remains. And finally, it's a, it's a more efficient solution, a, a, a cost-effective solution, because it leverages a security operation center, a 7 by 24 by 365 operation which is constantly monitoring your computers for any kind of behaviors or algorithms that are malicious. Um, it's up to the minute. Um, these are the agents that go on the computers uh, report back to the uh, Security Operations Center real time so that whether the attack happens during the day or over the weekend, um, you're, you're covered, you're monitored, and the analysts are watching what's, what happens. Um, there's custom data correlations, and that's important because as hackers evolve and modify threats, the traditional definition-based protection uh, is weak. Uh, they can get around that. So as our security operations center continues to get updates from myriad of sources, they're able to constantly tweak the algorithms and look for the latest behaviors um, in order to protect our customers. Um, in terms of how the threats are uh, evolving, 61% um, of the organizations in 2021 were, were breached by malware. We heard about ransomware all through last year. Um, there's no doubt that the coronavirus um, has, there's no doubt that the coronavirus uh, impact uh, making people go remote has opened up a lot of security holes and hackers are taking advantage of that. Um, endpoint security is valuable because when the, like I mentioned earlier, when the laptop or the workstation moves from the office or the school environment to a, a remote environment, the protection remains and that endpoint continues to be protected. 
Um, so that's a very valuable aspect of this type of protection. The endpoint security product comes with a dashboard because as all technology has evolved, we know that customers want to be, they want to have visibility into what's happening. And endpoint security comes with a dashboard that allows you to see real time the types of events that are happening with your network, in your district, in your school, um, what, what, what number of incidents are happening, how many are critical. Um, this has a drill down capability. So you're able to look deeper into any of the events. Um, you could see here that there's a number of endpoints that are monitored. If you notice that the quantity of endpoints is not what you expected, this is a real time way for you to get a sense of how your environment is operating and how it's being protected. <clears throat> In terms of the features of this product, um, most importantly, we like to highlight that it's, uh, it's an enhancement over the existing um, and traditional antivirus that you have. So it not only does definitional based uh, monitoring, but it also monitors behaviors of the computer. So one of the great examples to use is, for example, doing a, a file upload, doing a mass upload of files um, may not be a suspicious activity. However, if that mass upload happens at two in the morning, it becomes more suspicious. And those are the types of behaviors that the Security Operations Center can monitor and take action if they see it. For example, if malware gets on a computer and a typical technique is that uh, hackers will get into one computer, move laterally within an environment, and then start executing hack code off of a second computer, when they monitor that and see that file upload happening, they could quarantine that computer. They could take action in real time so that the threat is minimized and contained. And then of course, alerts will go out to your IT team in order to inform them which nodes had the problem and what the problem was. We, as Doug mentioned, we, we embrace the consultative approach to how you design your network, but also how you design your security. So the implementation of endpoint security relies on <clears throat> an initial policy consultation where we will talk with you about your computers, your operating systems, uh, the be normal behavior of what you expect so that we can customize the protection for your environment, for your school district. I mentioned that there's the portal experience, which allows you to see real time what's happening in the environment. And then we have um, a project manager that will hold your hand through the implementation phase so that we can ensure that all these agents get installed appropriately, correctly, and that the monitoring starts up correctly. And from that point forward, you're just uh, an ongoing monitored uh, customer. There's two uh, variants of this product. And in the advanced variant, we allow the ability to get digital forensics. So if your school district is required on, the, on a breach, uh, God forbid there's a breach, but if there is one and you're required to give forensics to the investigating agency, we're able to provide that through our advanced product. So in conclusion for endpoint security, um, as mentioned, uh, security is a belt and suspenders type of an approach. It's a, a it's protection should happen at multiple layers, defense and depth. And through our developments with uh, layer one encryption, through our product offering with Cloud Connect that gives you a a secure channel to the cloud. And now through the use of endpoint security and possibly some of our other protections, the edge protection or our DDoS protection, we feel that we're able to provide you in a single house, all the types of cybersecurity protections that will keep your schools operational. Uh, th thanks, Bill, and, and thanks everyone. Uh, one question that came through, this is this is Doug, and I think uh, Roman's going to pin us up so you can see us as we're, we're talking here. One question that came, I can start, and then uh, anyone uh, of these esteemed colleagues can add to it. And again, thank you all for, for attending here. Uh, one of the questions that came up, it said, uh, if the infrastructure that is put in place by LightPath comes into one of our buildings, does it enable all the things that we just talked about, or is it something where you have to keep kind of bringing in different equipment, different layers 
uh, or is it that once kind of the Sienna gear is there, you can play off of that to connect to cloud and then add in security? So I'll let either Moss or Bill or, or Ken add to that uh, kind of configuration question. Moss, you want to start and it and off? You guys want to jump in? I'll, I'll start it off. So, so the answer is yes, right? I mean, everything we do is based on dedicated fiber. Um, we're we're going to run dedicated fiber into the customer suite. We're going to dedicate it. We're going to put hardware out there, whether it's an optical solution or an Ethernet button network. We're going to put a, a, a layer two NID or a Deanna chassis out at your location dedicated to that site. All of that will tie into our infrastructure, enabling you to get to the cloud, enabling you to pull DIA type services. Um, and getting to you anywhere else that's on that to our network, whether it's another one of your locations that you need a private line connection to or a, a carrier hotel because you're trying to connect to another carrier provider's network. So once that fiber is in your location, you know, short answer is, yeah, you have, you have capabilities of connecting to all our products and services as well as the ability to connect other locations and other networks. Great, Moss. And can or Bill, anything to add to that? Yeah. Otherwise, I'll... Something to offer, Doug, is that um, from the cybersecurity, a lot of times we leverage VPNs, virtual private networks, um, to connect to either data centers or partners that you have. And as Ma said, once our network's installed, even if your partner is not on the LightPath network, we can still establish secure connections to them so that we can still leverage the technologies and the products that we offer to give you the highest level of uh, protection. Great, uh, thank you. And and maybe as you're talking, you could you could um, comment on how it connects to the actual. So if the school system had student devices, would would we do something where we're touching the devices? I know, Ken, if you can comment on that. Yeah. So basically, with the endpoint security product, right? We provide the agents. I'm sure Bill could talk more more to it, but we provide the agents to the IT folks for them to go around and install on the various Chromebooks, laptops, servers, whatever it is that they need to be managed, right, Bill? Yes, exactly. So not only does the, the protection occur while the, uh, the the laptop, the workstation is in, in school on premise, it also happens when they're remote. So whether it's your teachers going on vacation, whether it's students taking it home, there's always that layer of protection that can follow. Um, and, and I and I'll just add, uh, as one of the customers that we turned up recently, uh, Bill's aware of, uh, we actually left ourselves in the pool of folks to get notified. And one of the teacher's laptops was taken home and she was a victim of malware. Uh, and right away we got notified the next morning and let them know they were able to remediate it almost within the first, I'll say, 20 minutes of her getting back on site. That's great. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So the next question that's come in is for Cloud Connect, you know, what's the benefit of a direct connect versus using the internet, I assume, meaning using the internet to reach cloud providers that they get from LightPath today? Uh, so the direct connection versus an internet connection, I assume I'll use the word security, but I'll turn it to the three technical experts to comment versus Doug Turtz. Sure, if you don't mind, I'll start. Um... So the idea, first of all, is every cloud provider will advertise that you could get to their services over the internet, and you can. Um, but what you'll find is as you migrate your infrastructure, as you go from simple uh, database services, maybe web servers, as you start to migrate more of your infrastructure into the cloud, as you're going over the internet, you have to remember that the internet is a best effort. It's a contention-based network. So as much as people are using the internet to browse uh, Yahoo, Google, et cetera, also your critical business apps are going over that. And what happens is latency starts to set in and variability. And primarily the idea of getting your own circuit is number one, it's more secure because it's not the internet. So you do not have to be concerned with hackers or monitoring or man in the middle types of events where that data is out on the internet. It's not, it's on a uh, private circuit from your premise through our cloud right to the cloud provider. Number two, it's more predictable. As you migrate data, and, and one of the big examples is uh, data backup, data storage. As mass quantities of data have to be moved from a server into the cloud or out of the cloud, 
<clears throat> there's a need to have some more um, defined uh, latencies for that data. Again, through a dedicated circuit, we could provide that. So those are the two big advantages of having that direct connect. And, and I'll just give you one quick real life scenario that we were dealing with a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we received a call where we had Wi-Fi in a building of one of the schools and they had the Chromebooks. And for those of you who are familiar with the Chromebooks, they reach out to the Chrome website, they load up their profile and they download it from the, from the web. The Chromebooks were spinning. They couldn't even get some of the kids to connect in. They thought it was a Wi-Fi problem, but it was actually because they were going through the internet and it was just so much congestion. Uh, once they got the direct connection, all of a sudden, all that latency and the spinning was gone. And we were able to diagnose that because the, the teachers' smart boards were able to go out to the Internet without a problem and hit the sites that they were hitting over the Wi-Fi. So we knew it wasn't a Wi-Fi issue. So once we tracked it down, that's what it turned out to be. Great. Um, so, so another uh, question that did pop up is you know, with regard, and maybe Bill, uh, you take this one as well, with regard to endpoint security, you know, how, how does that differ from sort of traditional antivirus or software-based firewalls that I, that I have today? Sure. Um, one of the, the most uh, common questions, right? People will buy their Semantic, they'll buy their Norton, and they'll say, you know, why, why doesn't that protect me enough? The first thing to say is, in all of those cases, you typically get the software and you'll install it, and maybe your IT admin is responsible for maintaining that software, meaning downloading the, the definitions on a daily basis, if not hourly basis. So the first difference is the agents that we install are automatically updated. You do not have to worry about that. That's going to happen. The second thing is the types of detection that occur. Traditional software is going to do what's called definition-based detection which is to say uh, the, def the, the, the hack or the malware was noticed somewhere, uh, maybe if you're running Semantic, uh, Semantic noticed it somewhere, they characterized it, they defined how it looks, um, and then they move it, into your look they'll move it into a definitions file. You will download that definitions file, and from that point forward, the piece of software will notice whether or not that definition is on the computer. Most significantly, is that hackers are changing their techniques. They're not using the same hacks from yesterday. So when I mentioned before about the behavior-based analytics, the idea that it's not necessarily a file location or a file definition, it's how that file is being used is the hack. So PowerShell is a very powerful tool in Windows. So just by running PowerShell, that's not a problem. But if a PowerShell script is executed, at a particular time or with a particular uh, authorization as an administrator, those are the behaviors that start to become noticed. And those are the leading indicators of a hack. Your typical traditional antivirus will not notice those things. And if they do notice them, you need somebody who, who a human or an algorithm that recognizes that and starts to take defensive actions. In our solution of endpoint security with the agents that we use, we'll use uh, CloudStrike, Carbon Black, Microsoft Defender, it doesn't matter which the agent is. The point is it connects to a SOC, a security operations center, which is man and woman um, by uh, hundreds of analysts whose job it is every day to look at these behaviors, to modify the algorithms and highlight when they occur, not only that they're occurring, but to take action when they do occur. So now you could, if you start to see a surveillance attack where the hacker is just infiltrating your system and planting code in different places, they can notice that behavior and then start to take action before the hack actually occurs. So there's a lot more benefit, a lot more power to having a SOC, a security operations center, backing up the security stance of your company. Is that Great. It? I think I, I think that's it. I don't see any more questions popping up at the moment. So I will I will just uh, say that you know I, I think Bill hit on a really great point about you know the SOC and our NOC. Everything we're talking about from the fiber layer to Cloud Connect, the optical that Moss.
Ross talked about, enabling the different services throughout, all the way to security and even getting into Wi-Fi. If we as Lightpath bring a service to our customers, we are partnered with you to be part of that monitoring, to be part of that resolution, to be part of the refreshes should something ever become end of life and doing that well in advance so there's no hot cut. We understand the, the times of years with school systems that are the busiest and when there's downtimes to in, implement new things. So again, uh, as we think about that journey, think about the, the full uh, suite that we're bringing, but it's not just a, a product and hand it off and, and hope for the best. It is truly managed, monitored, and communicated with our customers. Uh, there's so much more we could go into as we're, we're thinking about our product set and what we do next and all the things, you know, with bringing your own device that are happening. And again, we talked about the pivot of home versus in-person learning and so many different elements in terms of connecting even to platforms like this or to Zoom and, and what that means for security. So we have a lot going on and, and these folks spend their days. We don't let them have any windows to look outside. They've got to, just like the foundation of learning a, in a school where you start in kindergarten and go all the way up and keep building those elements as my children are here in uh, New York City where I live, learning more every day. We start with a certain level of security and now Bill's talking about software and, and hardware devices, so many things that we add every day to the suite. So we want to hear from you what you're thinking about. We appreciate, again, your time today. Uh, and feel free if something strikes you and says, hi, I wish I asked that, just reach out to us. Otherwise, we are here as Lightpath to, to serve your needs. And as we come up with new things, we'll make sure we communicate them to you and with you. And again, thank you. And, and please stay safe and healthy throughout the, the school year and uh, end of year here as we approach Q4 for us, which is amazing to say. So thank you again, and uh, we'll look forward to talking soon.